I have no quote for this movie, but I mean, it's the movie that nobody asked for, but really, I actually want to make a video about it. So, fams, welcome back to my channel for another movie review, and today I'll be reviewing The Thing 2011. Well, I call it The Thing prequel. It's a prequel to the original Thing movie called The Thing. Coming up right now, I hope you guys enjoy the show. All right, quiet on set. Scene one, take one. Action. The Thing was released in 2011 is directed by Matthijs van Heinegen. Matthijs, Matthijs van Heinen? Or is it Matthijs van Heinen? I, I don't know, I'm sorry if I put your name. Matthijs van Heinen Jr. And it stars Mary Elizabeth Weinstead, Joel Anderton, Eric Christian Olsen, and Ulrich Thompson, just to name a few. So the story of the film is about a an American researcher is being asked to join a Norwegian team in the Antarctic since they discovered a spacecraft. They basically find an alien and they want her to help them out with the research. So they go to the they go to the Norwegian base and so then they dig up the thing and they just take it to the base and they oh it's a nice discovery but then the thing breaks out and wrecks rocks runs amok and you find out what happened to the Norwegian base. I forgot to mention in the thing or my, my review for John Carpenter the thing the film does start off with Norwegian shooting at a dog and they visit the Norwegian base at the beginning of the movie. So this film is about what happened to the Norwegians before the thing attacked the American base, United Outpost 31. So let's just get on to what I actually like. The acting is extremely good. Mary Elizabeth Wine said it, it does an amazing performance of what she's given. And Ulrich Thomas, Thompson? Yeah, he's he's actually an, a cool, he's, he's a pretty good character too. Even though he plays the asshole scientist, he does a good performance. Joel and Joel, they try to make him the next McCready, but honestly, so he's cool. But then again, I just feel like it's a bit forced. Like they try to make, make another McCready, so. Nah. I mean, it's painfully obvious that they give him a African-American co-star with him to make it look like it's McCready and Child. So, but I'm like, hey, come on, it doesn't. I know it's a trivia, but it doesn't really work. I also like the cinematography. I also love, I just love how it, they try to replicate a lot of the amazing shots, especially when, when they were looking at that block of ice with the thing is in there. They try to replicate how when McCready and... <clears throat> And Doc were, they discovered the Norwegian base and they survived that block of ice, but the thing broke out already. I also love how this film, Magis started, he wanted to use 35 millimeter film and man, it just shows that even in 2011, 35 millimeter film looks phenomenal. It looks, in my opinion, it still looks a bit better than, well, it actually looks better than digital cameras, honestly, digital film, so yeah. I still love the cold atmosphere. Again, I love the atmosphere of isolation, anything like that. That's really cool. Also, I do also like the concept that the thing, the thing doesn't behave the same thing as it was in the original. The original, he was a bit more stealthy and here he's more aggressive. But then again, McGree did give a theory that probably it woke up because it, it crash landed 100,000 years ago. And it probably woke up and probably not in the best of moves. And they really stuck to that. And honestly, since it's a prequel and the thing hasn't woken up for thousands of years, yeah, it's kind of, th it doesn't know how to adapt in the new world or, or something like that. Of course, it's going to be a bit hostile and it's going to act aggressive towards people and not be good at hiding. But also trying to adapt and try to survive. The pacing is really good. It's actually not rushed and I actually really, really enjoy the pacing. It's not too fast, not too slow. It's just the right thing. And I do like a lot of the scares here. Like, I actually, although you do, in some scenes, I predicted who the thing was. Sometimes it just gets, it does throw me off, which is actually cool. Cool. It actually does have a nice little prediction or whatever and hopefully this is not a spoiler thing like that so i also love how they added an extra concept to the lore of the thing where it cannot copy inorganic material so that is actually pretty fascinating so that is where my praises and so what stuff i do not like well let's start off with minor nitpicks for me i feel like this does feel like a remake of the original John Carpenter is a thing. It's kind of beat for beat. I mean, I get it. It does follow beat for beat. I, you can, I mean, I could say that, oh, well, it follows beat by beat just like in the original so that the thing can adapt better when it attacks the American base. So, yeah, I can go over that. But sometimes I feel like it's, mm, if it follows too much beats from the original movie, especially when there's some of the twists, I feel like, well, it's kind of like how in the original, the thing, how you don't know you didn't see that character was the thing you didn't see it coming and they kind of do it here which yeah but it actually follows a similar scene well yeah it's like with the blood test scene of the original and you find out who the thing is in that room and then that, in that scene and you don't see it coming same thing they had a scene where kate is trying to will see the people's feelings and right away it follows a character who is 
well, the thing. The ending is... Well, although I do kind of like the, the tension, it's such a rushed ass ending. I really am not, I'm pretty mixed about the ending. It's, I don't think it's that good. I really, because I, I will get to actually uh, later before I end this video, I actually want to make, I kind of want to give you guys some info on some facts bef if it's, for, the, for those who haven't seen the this movie. Now the story is, is it's good. Well, it was good until the third act where I, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to the end where it's just a okay story. I do like the concept that there were some Americans or whatever in the Norwegian base, but okay. And also I'm gonna get on to the obvious, the elephant in the room. But in my opinion, I don't think he's the worst offender really of this of this film. The special effects are trash. Well, there are some moments where the special effects are look pretty good, but the CGI is trash. They originally had amazing mix of practical and CGI effects. And I've heard that these effects are done. Like the CGI effects were actually better looking and better rendered and they fit better, look more realistic than the CGI that we got in the movie. What happened is that they got some amazing practical effects that are worthy like the original that look like Rob Bottin's effects and they look phenomenal. They look scary as hell. Unfortunately, there was a test screening, but here's the thing. Nobody, do I don't believe nobody documented the audience reaction, but the Universal, the executives hated the effects for some reason and they made Magis Van Hannigan reshoot the third act and paint over the effects to make it look like shit and it was rushed. And even Magis in the commentary track said, yeah, the effects were rushed. But what Magis did not say was that we had satisfying, amazing practical effects. And you can still see them a bit on the original teaser trailer from Comic-Con. And... <laughs> oh my goodness, the, the effects are just horrendous. I could show you some, some of the effects, but... Uh, just look it up on YouTube. You guys want to see the movie, look up the... Ooh. I hit my mic. If you guys don't want to see the movie and you guys don't care, uh, uh, just I say just look up the clips on YouTube. Type in the thing 2011. Just look at that. Also, I actually recommend you guys look at the original special effects from ADI. The ADI got ADI got so pissed off that they started a fundraiser to make a movie called Harbinger Down. I did not see it, but eh, doesn't look interesting to me for some reason. I might watch it just for you guys if you guys want me to review it. But yeah, the special effects are trash, and it's actually watching the behind the scenes at the original. Practical effects look amazing and it's such a huge shame. And you could tell that Matt just really didn't like that the studio forced him to clean clean them up with switch CGI. I'm not against CGI, I actually love CGI, but there are moments where CGI is not necessary. And like for example, the thing prequel did not need CGI. Well maybe it could use a little bit of touch of CGI for just to like make the effects look more convincing to audiences these days, but still practical effects, in my opinion, I prefer. And here it, it should have stuck to the guns but yeah i was good but i do prefer practical over cgi but yeah i do love both though i'm not a cgi hater i like most people <laughs> but yeah but yeah madge's van and madge's he had i can tell you he he didn't like that decision and also the writer and i think one of the producers hated that decision there's a difference between executive and produ uh, producer and producer and the producers are more hands-on with the project they actually care about the project about the art and the integrity of the film and the well helping the director out but on but in the yeah the producers and the writers they hated that they really they, they're very vocal about it on twitter and even manages low-key was pretty vocal about it but since this was his first film he's ever made of course he has to kiss ass to universal so that they don't get on him but the effects are not the biggest offender. The biggest offender, in my opinion, is some of the retcons of the original. For example, I don't mind how they discovered the spacecraft. It's cool that they saw, found it through a crack and they find it through kind of an ice cave, which is a decent retcon, but the thing happens is in the, in the original, McCready and Doc, they find out that the spacecraft is no longer functional. And in the original, it shows the Norwegians try to, well, salvage it by putting up dynamite and thermite and blowing it up and they accidentally destroyed the ship. Well, in this one, well, in the third act, they, they 
mm, it kind of changed that shit and, and I was just like, that's pretty bullshit. And also, so it, basically an explosion happens that's not like in the original and it creates this big crater and that's how McCready and Doc found it. But I remember I rewatched it recently and I swear before the, the climax happened, they were going to the ice cave and I'm like, wait a minute, what's that circular crater? I swear there was a crater there before they got in the ice cave. I swear. Maybe they blew it up before. Maybe there was a scene that they, they deleted that they did blew it up on accident, try to dig out the spacecraft after they found the alien, the, the thing and... I don't know. Yeah, that's actually how I got from there. I could say about the whole uh, 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 practical effects known as split face, where it kind of looks like in the original they did say that oh, it's like one single organ and a single a single set of organs, but in this movie they kind of changed it up a bit, and I'm like, I don't know. I'm pretty mixed on that. I don't know. We'll. See. Uh, it is a thing. We don't even know what it really is. <clears throat> all right. So yeah. So uh, that's all I gotta say about the thing. Well, one more thing. Uh, so like I said, the effects have been replaced by trash CGI and also the third act was different. Apparently in the, when in the beginning of the original movie the thing you see a spaceship crash land on earth. Well they, they created a nice little theory on why it crashed on earth. It could be the thing or it could be something else. In the original they actually had a the thing imitate an alien pilot. So if you watch the movie there's a scene where Kate looks at a bunch of Tetris pixels or whatever that's actually covering a thing and you can tell well not that you can tell and well actually hearing all these facts you can tell okay this is the reshotted stuff and this is the old stuff like the old footage so what was what i liked about in the the original ending is that the thing was an organism that was picked up by an alien race and the thing broke out and attacked the crew and one of the surviving member like the pilot tried to crash land under earth just so it can kill itself and the thing but unfortunately the thing got to it before it crashed land, before it died and that is such a cool, cool ending. Universal had to fucking get rid of that ending to give us a generic ending that was rushed as hell. And here's a little nitpick. I kind of don't like also that they, uh, the thing has kind of been a definitive roar, like a typical, stereotypical alien sound, like, ee, screeching sound. I don't know. The original, he had no definitive sound, but here they, uh, whatever, they gave him a definitive sound, but Again, it's a prequel, so it probably ad again adapted to survive more and to be more smarter. Or, well, just just to be more careful. Then again, also, I also like the no, 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 nice little note. I love that they actually picked Norwegian actors because, well, it is set in, in a Norwegian base. Let's get some actual Norwegian actors. That's cool, they stuck to the source and their performance is really good. So if I were to give the thing prequel or thing 2011 or just the thing, actually, we'll give it a nice three out of five. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's bad. I think it's okay. Actually, I watch it every now and then. Actually, it's actually one of those prequel movies that I actually is starting to grow a soft spot for, really honestly, to be honest with you guys, because it's actually a movie I don't mind popping in after I see the thing, or I watch that before I watch the thing, because the ending, it's amazing. Even though I say it's a rush ending, the credits ending, it's phenomenal. It just leads right into the original thing, and it's amazing. Oh, and also, it's a nice, it's just like the original, the thing, since it's gaining a, it didn't do well in theaters, even cr and, and critics didn't like it either. Well, now critics loving and it's getting an audience, not just a cult farming, but it's slowly becoming a pop culture movie, the original, the thing. And I'm glad this, to this very day, it's still finding its audience. It, the audience and fan base is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's just great. You see it more often in, <laughs> in places, it's great. And just like in this one, it's gaining, it's, it has its fans and it's slowly gaining its audience. Well, do you guys think that it'll gain even especially a lot of the people who didn't like the this the prequel originally. Do you guys think that the original cut of the film would win them over? Do you think it'll find a bigger audience? Let me know that in the comment section down below. So yeah, that is the, my review for The Thing 2011 prequel. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you guys so much for sticking this long, supporting my channel, and just, yeah, thank you. This is Avi from my production signing up. I hope you guys enjoyed the show.